Won't you take me back to Tennessee? The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest info about hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. This year, we celebrate the men and women of the TWRA responsible for 75 years of wildlife conservation. Now make welcome your host, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. I'm Jason Harmon. I'll be your host, and helping me out today is Mr. Don King. Yes, sir, Jason. Hey, first of uh, a few of these these kind of shows coming up. Something new we've, we've kind of worked up, haven't we? Yeah, I like, uh, I like this. We're going to do some outdoor updates or news you can use uh, following uh, our commission meetings. Yeah, especially following commission meetings. There'll be months where we don't have a commission meeting, but we plan to to give some outdoor updates, uh, you know, just more current, you know, up to date that particular day, that particular week. So, uh, yeah. But, hey, we've got, we've called in the big guns. We'll meet them here in just a little oh, bit yeah. from the Wildlife and Forestry Division. So, uh, we've got, we got a show packed with uh, a lot of the doing, the goings on from uh, the just recently finished commission meeting last week. Yeah, so. big season setting meeting. So, that was a big one. And, uh, we got those dates and those uh, seasons set for you. So. Updates and everything. Um, hey, we've got a radio station. Speaking of having been in Johnson City for the commission meeting up in East Tennessee, uh, we'll highlight a uh, an East Tennessee uh, radio station, WMCH, 1260 AM. Uh, they are in Church Hill, Tennessee, and... Uh, up in the Tri Cities area, and we're on uh, 5:30 p.m. Uh, Wednesdays at 5:30 p.m. and Saturdays at 7:30 a.m. with the extras. So awesome. anyway, yeah, we're, uh, we're excited to have them on board, and uh, thank you, thanks to all the other radio stations that carry us as well. Very much appreciate our radio stations and our TV partners and all those folks. So. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you all for tuning in on the radio if you are, and thanks for tuning in on podcasting app, YouTube, all those places. We appreciate folks listening and, and watching. Uh, I'm going to highlight the uh, spring turkey season. We're right in the middle of it right now, and uh, that goes through May 26th, so make sure you get out there and enjoy the turkey season. Yeah. Uh, now's a good time to be outside, so spring is, is awesome in Tennessee, so get out there and enjoy that season. And also, looking ahead a little bit farther, um, we've got Free Fishing Day coming up. Of course, mark your calendar. The mm-hmm. first Saturday after the first Monday in June, which is June 8th this year. There you go. Uh, so mark that down and uh, be sure and take advantage of that. And uh, maybe you can introduce somebody who hasn't been fishing in a while, reintroduce them to it, or, or take a newcomer out with and you. And don't forget the new name, Bobby Wilson, Free Fishing the Day. Bobby Wilson Free Fishing Day, exactly. Especially here in Tennessee. Yeah, so. thanks for remembering that. Uh, speaking of fishing, the fishing guide is online uh, right now only, but once we get the combo... Why is that we just have it online right now? Because it's going to be a combo. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Why print it when we're going to print it again? So, <laughs> uh, In order to cut back on a little bit on some print costs, and those those costs have gone up, so we're combining the guides. We're going to set seasons and set fishing regulations at the same time this next year, but uh, this, this next guide that comes out is going to be a combo guide. Yeah, that'll be convenient. By get one guide, pick up one guide, and keep it for the whole year. That'll be great. Definitely. Just like the licenses now, 365 days. 365, yes. Uh, if you're looking for a license, go OutdoorsTennessee.com. Uh, looking for regulations, tmwildlife.org. I think that's got it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, go check those out. Go get you a license. Get outside. Hey, today we have Mark McBride and Joe Benedict with us. Thank you guys for being with us. Thanks for having us. Oh, don't be quiet now. <laughs> We're looking for the cue. <laughs> Afraid to speak. No, you're good. Uh, Joe uh, Benedict is our chief of wildlife and forestry, and Mark is our assistant chief of wildlife. And I forestry. said big guns. Yeah, we got the top yep. of the top drawer guys here today. Yeah, well, we appreciate you guys being with us. I know y'all have been through a lot the last. Well, it's been more than a month, but I mean, just preparing and getting ready for the commission meeting and, and the season setting period. And I know your guys have been working hard and we're excited to cover some of that today. It's great to be here. You know, this year we, I think Mark will get into this later on, but we had a lot of uh, public input, uh, more than we've really ever had as an agency, both uh, email comments, online comments, and some public meetings. So I want to 
give a shout out to all the folks that commented and came to the meetings and listened and wrote in, Perfect. spoke to your commissioners who passed on that information to us. We had a really good uh, feel for what the public was interested in this year. So just a shout out to folks uh, taking time to uh, comment to us. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate folks weighing in and, and uh, yes, definitely. Uh, so first of all, I want to touch on a few of the things that happened and then, then we'll get into the, to the wildlife side of things. Um, so the, the first thing on the agenda for Thursday was uh, Jim Habera, yes. uh, Region 4 Fisheries Program Manager. He touched on on the tailwaters in East Tennessee. Uh-huh. Uh, so a lot of good information there. And just a reminder, if you, if you want to go back and hear the full discussion and the full presentation, you can go back uh, on our YouTube page to watch that and uh, to learn more. But just some of the highlights, 65 miles of tailwaters in East Tennessee. That was a new fact for me. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's wild, isn't it? Uh, but they manage a lot of water there. And... Um, and they've seen some some good trout going in and some good trout coming out. So he he mentioned that uh, 272,000 trout about are stocked in South Holston, Wilbur, Norris, Fort Patrick, Henry, Boone, and Cherokee. It's a lot of fish. Yeah. So all those tailwaters get adult and subadult fish, which are great for catching off the bat. Uh huh. So so that's cool. And uh, the. I guess the third thing I wanted to say, a large amount of that are really good brown, big brown trout. They're seeing a lot of wild big brown trout coming out of uh, South Holston, Wilburn, Boone. Yes. Yep. Big fish. Really so good. So that's, cool that's cool to hear. And then uh, Matt Majors, our lieutenant colonel uh, in law enforcement, he just highlighted some of the LE efforts that are going on. Our, our LE guys are... Uh, doing a lot out there. It's not just the the normal wildlife and fishery law enforcement work. So uh, they get called in on natural disasters, you know, manhunts, missing persons. Uh, you know, we have a great team of guys who can can dive down and 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 find anything that's been submerged, or they have the robots that can go down. Right. Yep. And find things for folks, but uh, our officers are are called in on a lot of different things, and uh, we appreciate the work that they do. And they're glad to do it as yeah. well. So yeah, definitely. Especially the missing persons folks, you know, the kids that that uh, that disappear into the woods oh, or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it, our guys are the ones that that uh, they get called on. Like as you said, they get called on regularly for things like that, and that's they look forward to doing those kind of work. Well, and that was one of the things that stood out to me that that's mentioned a lot. You know, we get called on because. We are in the woods all yeah. the time, so yeah. we have the gear, the four wheelers and the trucks and things that can go places maybe they can, or we know the woods maybe some better than than uh, your street law enforcement guys, you know. So, right, exactly. Anyway, we're glad that that we can help uh, as an agency. Uh, one other thing that was highlighted was the 2023 Shikar Safari Club International Tennessee Award winner, which was Justin Pinkston. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So congratulations to Justin for winning that award uh the shikar safari club international gives out an award every year so this year was justin pinkston so go back and watch the commission meeting you'll see videos or see some photos of the work that he's done and some of the things he's been involved in an so. impressive body of work for sure yep. that, that year for sure all right guys now it's time for some wall law i mean uh, wildlife start to say law enforcement <laughs> uh, one piece in here for law enforcement <laughs> yeah yeah um we will cover some of that for sure so I'm going to throw up some slides, and we'll be referencing those today. So if you're uh, listening, maybe you might want to go back and watch. You can see some of those uh, on the screen. But, um, guys, it was a big meeting. There was a uh, quite a few proclamations that we went through, and uh, uh, there was some uh, some recommendations that were accepted, some recommendations that were amended. But it was a an overall good meeting, I, I, thought, I feel like. It was. Again, a lot of public input. Our, our staff worked hard. I'm proud of our staff. We did a lot of things behind the scene, getting ready for this. You mentioned a, a busy month or two. It's really about a six-month process for season yeah. setting. We analyze data. We look at public input. We do some crunching of numbers. We talk through a lot of different issues with the director's office. Uh, so a lot of good, good effort went into these um, these changes that we're recommending. Yeah, and if you add in the deer and turkey changes that we propose this year, you know, with the new adaptive harvest management framework, that's that's been about a year and the year and a half in the work. Yeah, so that's it's, true. It's been a big push. This was kind of the the culmination of a lot of work uh, across that effort. Yeah, if you get our magazine, you saw kind of a highlight of of the AHM process and some of the proposed maps and things like that. But we'll get into those final maps and regulations today. Right. So, but yeah, it's been a it's been a long process, hasn't it? 
All right. Uh, let's jump into Proclamation 2407. Uh, this was the statewide fur bear hunting and trapping season and big game limits. Uh, so we came with a recommendation, but it was changed, right? right? Well, we came with a small <laughs> recommendation. To. It was added to, right? So the, this, I'll take this one. Um, so the uh, we recommended we had to really um, remove long-tailed weasels and spotted skunks as uh, legal to take for fur bears uh, because the state threatened endangered species list had been updated. So this is just kind of a cleanup. Mm -hmm. um, and folks that have watched this commission meeting or even some in the past, uh, for the last couple of years, probably several, I guess, maybe many, um, there's been uh, interest in the nighttime coyote hunting season. Um, and so the commission asked us to consider uh, what – sort of sideboards or recommendations the agency might have for the commission to consider. So on Thursday, the Wildlife Committee heard this, and then, of course, Friday, they, they ended up passing it. But there is now a nighttime coyote and bobcat season in Tennessee. Um, it'll be it'll occur. It'll start the day after deer season ends and go through uh, the second Sunday in March. It'll close down essentially for turkey season. Okay. Um, and then it'll open the first Saturday in June to go to the second Sunday in August. Um and this one bobcat or one coyote, I'm sorry, one bobcat per night, no limit on the coyotes. Um, and that's kind of where the season was set. Um, the next slide, if you have, Jason, I think it's the manner and means of hunting. And so yep. this was done in two different pieces, kind of a technical thing here. But the manner and means are uh, is the proclamation that describes how you can take, take mm -hmm. animals. And so in this case, uh, we're requiring landowner permission. Um, Written permission. Written right. permission. And, yeah. and we clarify that it could be a written uh, note, it could be text or an email. Uh -huh. So provide some flexibility with electronics these days. Um, shotguns only, no single projectile. There's concern uh, from the farming industry uh, and some partners about, you know, what happens at night when you can't quite see mm -hmm. as far as your projectile. Know your go. target and beyond. Right. Know your target and beyond. That's right. And so uh, it's no single projectile. So essentially buckshot and below any, any shotgun uh, non-single projectile will be legal. Uh, we're allowing lights, but not uh, attached to a motor vehicle, or you can't cast them from a public road. That's something folks may want to pay, pay attention to. You can't spotlight from the road, you know, looking for coyotes and bobcats. Uh, we do allow night vision and thermal imaging. That's a cool thing that folks are using these days. Mm. You can use hand, mouth, or electronic calls, um, but dogs are not allowed in this. So that's a those two proclamations together, again, create the season and, and create the methods allowed uh, to use to take those animals. All right. And then uh, this all goes into effect, just so folks know, the whole uh, – everything that was voted on goes into effect in August, correct? The hunting guide comes out in August yeah. and lists these. Um, right. It's a number of days after it's filed with the uh, – Gotcha. It's 30 days after it's filed with the, the attorney general's office. So okay. it, they they still have to these final proclamations still have to get signed and, and go through the yeah process. so don't run out tomorrow yeah, that's so what we're getting at it'll it'll go into effect uh, you know after it's all right. filed and right. tune in we will let you know yeah for yeah. sure for sure all right so that's awesome I mean you know folks have been wanting to uh, wanting this for a while some folks have you know some folks you know may feel it's dangerous but uh, it's uh. It's a way to help control predator populations and when it comes to coyotes and, and, uh, and give them another opportunity to do that at Jason, night. You know, I've never thought about doing it myself, but it might be kind of fun. Jason, I wanted to add something. that One, one thing that happened, um, I think it was on Friday, just after a break, Lieutenant Colonel Dale Grandstaff of the Law Enforcement Division um, provided some clarification. You know, you can if you have personal property, chickens, cows, um, you know, domestic quail that you purchased, um, there's a depredation allowance for any animal destroying your property. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's personal property, not property of the state. He provided some clarification. So um, there may have been a misspeak a long time ago at a commission meeting years ago, but basically if um, – if the if the property is yours and animals are damaging your property, you can depredate uh, them um, year round, and okay. so it's very different than this season. There's different allowances, but again, the clarification that that must be your own personal property, right? That they're damaging. Cool. Well, all that was discussed and, and presented. So go back and watch that, so you'll get all the details on that. So that's great. Um, all right. So this was this was uh, one of the big ones. The proclamation 2014 had a lot of the big game stuff going on. So here we go. Uh, first part is the bear uh, bear hunt zones, and uh, we had a few uh, a little change here. That uh, zone five, right? Zone five was new to the. Yep, that's right. See. So I'll just run through these real quick. So sure. yeah, we created a new bear hunt zone. That's bear hunt zone five. That that consists of Hancock and Hawkins County. Um, so originally, the, in the past, those have been part of the transitional zone where there was only an archery hunt. Um, by creating this new bear hunt zone. 
we're able to allow some gun hunts now. So mm -hmm. there'll be a gun hunt the second weekend in December. Um, it's going to occur on private lands only. There's not much public land in that part of the state. Um, but it'll also allow the young sportsman hunt at the end of October. Youths can get out there and, and um, if, if they have the opportunity, they can take a bear. Okay. Um, so pretty so cool. incidental to, to the, to the de deer season, correct? Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, no. that's awesome. That's a, that'd be a cool experience for a young man or young lady. Yeah, yeah. And so in Bear Hunt Zone Four, which is encompasses the plateau, there's there's been a growing bear population there for for years now, uh -huh. and, and they've had the same op archery opportunity that the transitional zone has had. Um, and our bear biologist worked with some researchers. They figured out, hey, the bear population's grown to the point now that we can sustain a gun hunt. Mm -hmm. um, and there's enough large tracts of lands there that we actually think we can, you know, we know we can do a dog hunt. So dogs are going to be uh, able to be used on that hunt and bear hunt zone four. That'll occur at the same time, so the second weekend in December. Um, and then during the youth hunt in October, uh, young sportsmen can also take a bear during the cool. during that hunt. So Yeah. Um, some exciting new hunting opportunities yeah. there. Um, and then the Tennessee Bear Hunters Association has actually come with a request to ex expand a training season into the spring. So we are going to offer a 14-day training season um, in bear hunt zone 1, 2, and 3. And so that'll occur. It's It begins the Saturday after Memorial Day, runs for 14 days thereafter. Um, so that'll be a good opportunity for guys to keep their dogs in shape and yeah. ready to go once the fall comes around. Cool. You know, that's something I've never done. I think it'd be fun to try out some bear hunting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I put put on a good pair of hiking boots. Yeah, they, uh, right. they cover some they cover some area. And I, I felt like uh, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, discussion around this. So I feel like you know it's well received. Uh, I think uh, folks were happy about what was proposed for the for the bear seasons. Yeah, 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 and this is one where we got a lot of positive uh, feedback from the public. They were supportive. Um, you know, and this is really kind of the first step. We want to. Start conservative, see how the hunt goes, see what harvest looks like yeah. before we look at adding additional opportunities um, if they're available. Awesome. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Well, the big one here, deer management unit and seasons. Uh, I'm excited about this. I think it's 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 a new approach with the, the, the AHM stuff, like you mentioned, the yeah. forest management. And and uh, I'm excited to see see how this next season goes. But let's, let's dive into this one. Yeah, I think first I'll just throw a, a pitch out for folks to go watch the October commission meeting, mm -hmm. the January commission meeting, and the March commission meeting, where they can really see the nuts and bolts of our, our new approach, this adaptive harvest management approach, and kind of see how it's structured and really why it's an improvement of in, in how we've been managing. Um, so if you haven't watched those, please go watch them. Yeah. It's it's a pretty cool process, um, and hopefully folks feel like we're, you know, we're putting our best foot forward in managing deer and turkeys. Definitely. Um, and so... You, uh, hopefully you've got the deer units, the new units and seasons on the on the screen here. Yeah. But uh, we got a lot of good feedback from the public that they really like this simplified approach. You can see now uh, we only have two different seasons across the state. Kind of the whole framework is the same um, as as far as when seasons start and end. So. <clears throat> Really, I, think, yeah, I was gonna say I think it simplifies things a little bit from what it was. I mean, you still have six units like we had in the past, but they're just uh, I think they're cut up a little bit different. But I think it makes it a little bit easier to follow for for the hunter. Yeah, and and when we had six units previously, there were six different hunting seasons, and right. some ended and began at different times. Um, so here, it's kind of streamlining everything. Mm -hmm. Hunting season starting in on the same date across all the units. Really, the only difference is bag limits. Bag limits, yeah. So. Yep. I think yeah. that's great. One of the pieces, if I could add, mm -hmm. the work that Mark did and, and the presentation he did in October was a little bit of explaining the, the root cause, the reason that we have the units divided like they are. They're very different than in the past, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I really encourage folks to watch that October meeting. But really, um, the the fundamental thing here is the different data layers, right? So in the past, um, if you look at the Eastern Tennessee units, they would change every couple of years mm -hmm. because – you know, folks thought they were seeing some things, but this is based on different layers. Like, so percent edge, percent forest, percent agricultural, things that in general don't change. And so because of those habitat, the, the soil types, some underlying factors, the, um, the, the deer populations or turkey populations, which we'll get to next, uh, are likely to um, 
uh, act similarly uh, in those areas in response to a change in hunting regulations. <laughs> really, the, the underlying uh, re- these units will stay the same over time. Okay. And again, yeah. it's because of those geographic, uh, geological f- uh, factors. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the the units are very intentional as as far as the underlying data, and that all kind of comes back to this new approach where we're trying to hold as many things kind of consistent and standardized as possible across these units so that we can measure what's going on with the population and it's not confounded with you know different environmental complexities and um kind of you know potentially different land uses that we know would cause a difference in, in deer populations and it's not perfect where you know we can't even manage across a county with with all things being equal um but at, at the high level we're trying to really be intentional with our management so mm-hmm. we can monitor things better and we can better understand the impacts of our yeah. hunting seasons on these populations. Yeah, awesome, awesome. I think that's great. Uh, let's see. Let's go on to the next slide here. CWD positive counties. Uh, so there's a list of the CWD positive counties, and just want to clarify that uh, that the CWD management zone for carcass transportation and wildlife feeding regulations has not changed, uh, and that that is the next slide. But just wanted to make sure folks knew which counties were positive. Correct. What we're showing here. Yeah, so the, there will be a slight change with the Ernabuck program. Um, previously, Ernabuck was tied to the CWD unit. We no longer have a CWD unit, so the Ernabuck is now tied to those positive counties. So there's actually in, an expansion of opportunity for those folks that that want to take advantage of this de- disease man, man, disease management measure here. Right, right. Um, so you can yeah. see those 17 counties. That is where Ernabuck will apply. So if 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 you take in, a doe, you are eligible to take an addition. And for buck. our radio audience, those counties would be Chester, Crockett, Fayette, Gibson, Hardeman, Haywood, Henderson, Madison, McNary, Lauderdale, Shelby, Tipton, Dyer, Hardin, Henry, Lewis, and Weekly. There you go. All right. <laughs> and then here's a here's a map of the of the transport uh, the management zone that uh, that is affected by transportation and feeding. So. Uh, just it, that's there's been no change there, so make sure you keep an eye on your um, on your hunting guide this year, and you'll see that. So, and we'll have the website updated as well. Yeah, that website will be updated in the next week, couple of weeks or so. There's a lot of detail here that we need to um, work through, so we've got our staff working on that. Perfect. Just one thing to note: it's a really it's it affects those folks in Southwest Tennessee, but the buck bag limit, the antlered bag limit uh, for next fall, will be two statewide. So, again, as Mark mentioned, as we mentioned here a minute ago, you can earn additional bucks by shooting a doe and having that doe tested for CWD, but the statewide bag limit is two, mm-hmm. which is a change from last year. So okay. just want to make sure that was clear. Yep. Thank you for, for clearing that up. Yeah, we didn't mention that. Perfect. Okay. Uh, the turkey management units. And we're going to, to hurry. We're going to run out of time. All right. So um, some new units here, but uh, talk us through this. Yeah, so no units, but ultimately the commission decided they wanted to, to keep the bag limit across the state at two. We had proposed a few units going to three, um, but the commission wants to be conservative. There's still a lot of uncertainty out there amongst hunters, and, and we did hear that in the public comment. Uh-huh. Um, so for next year, the start dates are slightly adjusted. Instead of being Saturday closest, April 15th, it's going to be the second Saturday in April. So the youth hunt will be the first weekend in April. Regular opener is that second Saturday in April. Um, and then uh, most of the other regulations are going to stay the same. So there's two bearded turkeys statewide, only one of which can be a Jake. Um, for this year, no bearded hens are going to be allowed. That was something that c- the commission heard from a lot of the public, and mm-hmm. they decided to bring that. Uh-huh. So no bearded hens are allowed to take any, are, are legal to take anymore. Um, so hunters mm-hmm. need to make sure they're paying attention to that. Um, and then there's some slight changes to the fall season. So uh, the fall season will be open. Instead of one per county now, it's going to be one statewide one in the fall. Bearded turkey um, and there's going to be a slight adjustment to the counties that are not open for that fall season. So I think okay, yeah, we've got we got a slide that next that. slide yeah. will have those counties. So, yeah, there's currently, I think, 18 counties, and that's going to be reduced to 11 counties that are closed during the fall. Okay. So these fall closures were recommended by the commission. So it was an amendment that was passed by the commission. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, So, yeah, there's going to be a few counties closed to the fall turkey hunting season. Uh, Wayne, Lawrence, Giles, Lincoln, Lake, Dyer, Crockett, Lauderdale, Haywood, Tipton, and Shelby. Uh, And then as we get into the wildlife or the WMA uh, proc, we'll see some WMAs that were affected by that, correct, on that closure. 
for the fall. I we, think we don't have the list here today. Oh, we don't. Okay, right. Got you. Um, yes, we do. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Holly Fork Creek Refuge Proclamation twenty four oh four. We better hurry. Uh, run us through this one real fast. One hundred twenty five acres in Henry County. We've had a history of of being there as as allowing hunting. Um, there was some different land use, and so we're able to reestablish this with hunting seasons. It'll be just for a youth hunt, a youth deer hunt for now. So stay tuned for more information on that. All right, and then the Catusa. This is another piece of property we were just able to acquire, about 1,750 acres, just west of Catoosa itself, Catoosa WMA proper. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, this is only open uh, for limited hunting right now. Uh, the agency is considering some other uses, maybe some mentored hunts and things. Uh, just a note, if you see the screen there, our law enforcement academy for training game wardens will be moved to there in a couple of years. Right. Yeah. There's a piece we've pulled out for just that, for that training for uh-huh. safety. Very cool. All right. And then the WMA proc. Uh, Go ahead. We'll hit this at a high level. I know we're running out of time, but uh, a couple things here on the screen, uh, some changes to the statewide WMA regulation. So it affects all of them. So we're adding some prohibitions uh, for uh, prohibiting salt miner- salt products, minerals, and other consumable products on WMAs. Right now it says salt, I think, only. Uh, there's been no change to the duck blind list. Every couple of years we uh, look at the list and, and review that list and bring it to the commission um, if you're on a WMA with a dog, if you're not involved in hunting or training, you've got to have that dog restrained. Mm-hmm. Uh, fur bear season is open with other seasons um, when it coincides with that. And then when fall season turkey, fall turkey season is open, it's open on WMAs with statewide seasons. Obviously, that would exclude those counties we mentioned previously. Yeah, so there's the WMAs that are affected. Uh, Bogota, Eagle Lake Refuge, Meeman Shelby, uh Browntown, Flintville, yeah. Eagle Camp. These have not have no false season. Right. right. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to move on to. I want to move on to the uh, game bird seasons real fast. The uh, du- uh, duck. So we wanted to make sure this is no. Make sure people know these yep. these right here. Go ahead. Yeah, this is the current format that we have now. So we'll open the Saturday after Thanksgiving, like we always do, and then the second phase will open 58 days prior to January 31st. Due to the wonky calendar, there's not much of a break this year. So you can see on the screen, um, after that initial week initial weekend, there's only going to be a three day closure, and we'll open again on December 5th. Yeah. So a Saturday opener and then a Thursday opener for the second phase. Uh, this has been. Uh, uh, kind of a whirlwind here trying to get all this in <laughs> there's a lot covered at the commission meeting it was a meeting. big yeah. meeting I, I, like you guys have said you know i'll, I'll reiterate watch the watch the video because there's a lot in that meeting yeah so it was fun to go through these real fast and and, and like i said go watch for more detail go ahead joe i uh, just want to make sure folks know we had to repeal the arnold hollow wma in lower middle tennessee oh, right. because of lease prices so don't want to didn't want to miss that on the show today and again thanks to all the folks that provide comment every year this year in particular with the adaptive harvest management process and then our season setting yes thanks for all that reached out yeah well thank you Absolutely. all for the, for the hard work that y'all do and, and your your staff there's a lot of guys on the ground doing a lot of work so appreciate y'all a lot of preparation much. goes into that uh, especially that meeting that we just finished so <laughs> yep. appreciate you guys well thanks, thanks for, for tuning us. in thanks for hanging with us for this little preview and an update and uh, we'll keep doing these for you but keep coming back keep watching keep listening and we'll see you next time Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, X, and Instagram. Join us as we celebrate 75 years of conservation in our great state. You can invest in Tennessee's wildlife future by purchasing a license at GoOutdoorsTennessee.com. That's GoOutdoorsTennessee.com.